Hello. So in the previous lecture, we have seen how to create a simple state chart, uh, which is actually basically a state chart with only two states, display hour and display seconds, between whom you can uh, cycle by uh, by listening to the mode event. Uh, so now let's make this example a little bit more sophisticated by also using some uh, variables that we can uh, introduce. Uh, for example, if we need a real clock, then of course we need some notion of time that we would like to introduce. So to do this, I will take this clock interface that we have defined uh, previously, and uh, I will define in this interface the notion of time. So I will need, of course, a variable that represents the time. Let's call it time. Make it an integer value. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger to make it easier to read. So we have an integer time variable. Uh, we will also I will also add some extra variables uh, because if we have a clock, it would be nice to have a separate description for the hour of the clock or the minutes of the clock and for the seconds of the clock. Okay, so this is the the variables that I will use, all integer variables in my example. Um, now to start with, let us uh, do something to, well, if we want to display the hours, we would like to do this explicitly. So, um, well, every, what we want to do is every second, uh, the dis there will be another value that will be displayed. Um, so here I will use a timed event every one second do something and what we will do uh, will be to display the value of the variable which is in this case the the hour I will move this state a little bit to the right Like this. Okay, now we see that the state chart is complaining. Uh, what's the problem here? <coughs> it says that there is no reference to the uh, operation display. Okay, that's normal, that's because we didn't uh, define this yet. So the idea would be here that uh, whenever this operation is called, that something is displayed on the screen. So that's in fact not part of the state chart behavior, it should be defined in some external uh, Java method uh, or in another programming language but now just to make it complete let's uh, let us add this operation in the clock interface so we're going to define operation which is called display which requires as input some integer value let's call it i and which only has a side effect, so it doesn't uh, really produce a result. So the result is void. Okay. Again, I will make this a bit bigger. We move this around like this. Okay. Now we see there are no errors anymore. Uh, so the operation display it's, uh, is known. Uh, okay. In the simulation, when we run it, we will not see the effect of display. So consider this simply as something like a system out print line on your uh, in, in Java console, for example. Uh, so what we have now is that every one second, when we are still in the display hour state, the display hour operation will be called. We can do something similar for display seconds. So there, what we can do is uh, every one second we will trigger the operation to display the current value of seconds like this Sorry. okay maybe put this on the same line this okay so with this uh, we use timed events 
to do something every one second. Uh, now I will also uh, add some extra states uh, because if we have no, maybe before doing this, let me really uh, simulate the notion of time. So if we really have the notion of time that we uh, can see during the simulation, uh, we will have to do something more. Uh, so here, what I will do is, I will create inside this uh, clock interface some internal events to simulate the let's say the internal uh, clock of the system. So here, basically, what I'll do is, uh, every one second, I will increment the current time, the current value of the time variable, by one. Like this. And to initialize the time, well, we need to give a uh, uh, when, we, when the clock starts, we will give, need to give some default start value of the time. Let's say that we start running the clock uh, at 23 hours and 59 minutes and 0 seconds, something like this. Of course, this has to be converted into some single integer value. So how do we do this? Well. Uh, we will, well, everyone knows that zero seconds, that's still simply zero seconds. 59 minutes, that's 59 minutes times uh, 60 seconds. And 23 hours is 23 times 60 times 60 seconds. So if we have this formula, Will correspond to 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 0 seconds. Okay? Uh, so that's the start value of time. And now, whenever the clock will be running, every one second we will increment the time by one extra second. Uh, of course, this is the time variable. As you have seen here, there are also three auxiliary variables are minutes and seconds that need to be synchronized. So uh, starting from this time integer, we can compute the exact number of seconds as the value of the time variable, but we do modulo uh, 60. So like this, we will always get a value that is somewhere between 0 and 59. I use the semicolon to be able to execute multiple instructions at the same time. So I do the same with uh, minutes. How can we compute the number of the current number of minutes? I take the time variable. I remove everything that is seconds. So I do a integer division to remove the seconds. And then what remains is the minutes and the hours. Uh, I'm on, only interested in the minutes, so I do uh, modulo 60, and this gives me the number of minutes. And then for the hours, the same thing. Uh, to have the hours, I take the current value of time. I remove everything that's minutes and seconds, so I... Uh, integer division by 60 times 60, so 3600. What remains is the hour, and I know that every 24 hours I need to reinitialize re to zero, because I use a 24 hour time scheme, so I do modulo 24 to get the hour. So normally uh, this should work. Let's uh, check this by running the simulation. So I click on the simulation button. Okay, I could save the changes first. Uh, okay, there was still an earlier simulation going on, so I will relaunch, terminate the existing one, and relaunch the new one. And now we will see in the simulation view uh, here that okay, we have 23 hours, 59 minutes, and uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seconds. The global time variable is this one, so we see that these different variables are synchronized. 
Um, what we'll, we'll see in uh, half a minute from now is that once we reach uh, 60 seconds, the seconds will go back to zero because we have done modulo 60 here. For the minutes we will see the same thing because we have 59 minutes. So uh, whenever the minutes go to 60, the minutes will come back to zero because we have done also modulo 60. And for the hours it will be the same thing. We have 23 hours. Uh, whenever this goes to 24, it will go back to zero because we have done uh, modulo 24. So we're almost at midnight now, we still have two seconds to go and then everything will be initialized back to zero here as we can see and the normal time integer value is still continuing.